Welcome to the Nursing Post podcast, All Nursing All the Time with Ashley and Rosa. In this episode, we discuss cigarettes and vaping. Our goal is always to inform and start conversation. So November the 18th is the Great American Smokeout Day. So every year on this day, it brings attention to preventing deaths from chronic illnesses caused by smoking. So what better day for us to do an episode? Perfect, really. It's serendipitous. (laughs) So we have some statistics, and I'm sure you can find these anywhere because, you know, this has been a topic of, like, great debate since the first cigarette ever was invented. 40 million U.S. adults still smoke cigarettes, and tobacco use causes more than 7 million deaths per year. About 4.7 million middle and high school students use at least one tobacco product, including e-cigarettes. Each day, about 2,000 people younger than 18 years old smoke their first cigarette. And each day, over 300 people younger than 18 become daily cigarette smokers. That, that is huge. It is. That's a lot of children each day. Each year, nearly half a million Americans die prematurely of smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke. 16 million live with a serious illness caused by smoking. The United States spends nearly $170 billion on medical care to treat smoking-related diseases in adults. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable deaths. So we thought it would be interesting to list some of the ingredients in cigarettes. And forgive me if I mispronounce a couple of these, but we're going to tell you what the ingredients are and where they're commonly found. Some you will be familiar with and some you will not. But either way, you're going to be shocked. Yes. So acetone is found in cigarettes. It's also a nail polish remover. A lot of females are probably familiar with that. Acidic acid. This is an ingredient found in hair dye. Ammonia, which is a common household cleaner. Arsenic which I know a lot of people do know about, and this is found in rat poisoning. Benzene, which is found in rubber, cement, and gasoline. Butane, which is used in lighter fluid. Catamum, which is an active component in battery acid. Carbon monoxide, which is what is released from a car's exhaust. Formaldehyde, which is embalming fluid for the deceased. Hexamine, which is found in barbecue lighter fluid. Lead, which is used in batteries. Methanol, which is the main component of rocket fuel. Nicotine, which is also used as an insecticide. And that is also the addictive component of uh, tobacco products. And that's all tobacco products that contain nicotine, those e-cigarettes as well. Tar, which is used for paving roads. And I think this is lean, which is used in manufacturing paint. I honestly, after reading all these ingredients, I can't see how I was like a legit smoker, like a half a pack cigarette smoker every day for like three years? Well, I want to tell you, I have a history with smoking. I smoked for my late teens and early 20s. I got pregnant. I quit smoking at that point. Me too. And I had no idea what was in a cigarette. Never crossed my mind to be like, what is in this? Because you just think it's tobacco. Tobacco. Yeah, that's what they tell you, right? That's what all the, well, back then the commercials that were on TV, that's pretty much all that they said. Oh, it's just tobacco. It's tobacco in there. That's all that it is. But if they're listing this as their ingredients on the package, honey, it's not just tobacco. No. I mean, arsenic, rat poison. That Mm -hmm. one, I think to me was probably the most interesting, then followed by ammonia and acetone. Right. 
Like, I mean, all these things are cor- lead. not all of them, but most of these are corrosive. Yes, formaldehyde. They use that to keep bodies from decomposing. Why do you need formaldehyde in a cigarette? It's I gross. It fresh. I don't know. <laughs> what happened to preservatives? Now I'm going to be reading every single like label of the stuff I eat to make sure there's no formaldehyde in there. That's gross, gross though. So the addiction portion of smoking is the nicotine itself. Yes. Nicotine is a chemical that's found naturally in tobacco. So when you smoke, nicotine is quickly absorbed into your bloodstream. And within like 10 seconds of entering your body, the nicotine reaches your brain. There it activates what you know experts know to be your reward pathways or your pleasure pathways. And that's what creates the the pleasure and the sensation that you get when you um, smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Nicotine also causes the brain to release adrenaline, which gives you a sense of greater energy, including increasing your heart rate. But the thing with cigarettes and the thing with nicotine, the effects of it, they fade quickly, just as quickly as you got that little, for lack of a better word, high. Right. Is just as fast as, you know, it leaves. Mm -hmm. And that's why smokers keep on puffing and smoke frequently throughout the day is so that they can maintain that quote unquote high. Right. So the Surgeon General warnings were added to nicotine containing products like cigarettes, um, stating that smoking causes lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema and may complicate pregnancy, and that quitting smoking now greatly reduces the risk um, of serious health conditions. And, you know, I think it's interesting that it still has on there that it may cause complications during pregnancy, because we know that it does. Yeah, it does. It does. You're absolutely right. There's not a... um, there's not a gray area. We know that people that smoke, their kids tend to have lower birth weights. They can be, they're typically the ones that can be born more prematurely and there's complications. We do know have higher risks of asthma. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm surprised that that has not been updated. I'm surprised that nobody from like the pediatric OBGYN community hasn't pressed that issue yeah. more. Just take the may out and say it will complicate pregnancy. Right. So some of those disease processes are the chronic bronchitis, the low birth weight that you you mentioned, even the stuff that's mentioned here in the Surgeon General's warning, COPD, emphysema, lung cancer, um, heart disease, stroke, and death. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable deaths in the United States. It causes over 480, 100,000 deaths per year. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That's almost half a million people every year just from smoking, something that is preventable because all you have to do is not. Which leads you to think like, then why are these things legal? Like, why are we still have a market for something that we know causes so many complications. There's, there's not a benefit to smoking. Not at all. And it does hurt the person who is smoking more, but there are issues with secondhand exposure. Absolutely. Just because you're not the one smoking it doesn't mean that you're not affected by it. I know in my house growing up, my father was a smoker. He had, my mom made him go outside. Right. Right. And what Rosa has said ever since I've known her, it's, it's always about the money, no matter what you're talking about in some way, shape or form boils down to the dollars and the cents. You can always make a big loop and put, and it does, it really does. And it holds true with a lot of what the podcast, when we start digging into stuff, it's like, "Mm, money, Mm, here we go again, money. So there is uh, a federal judge, Gladys Kessler, who in August of 2006 found that the major tobacco companies, like the Philip Morris is what I really know it as, it's also known as Altria, and R.J. Reynolds were guilty of civil racketeering charges. Isn't that crazy? 
I mean, I'm not surprised anymore. I think doing this podcast is kind of like opened up our eyes a little bit to a lot of the things that were going on in the background. Mm -hmm. But when you think of racketeering, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Mob mentality, right? Yeah. Well, it's very much about the movement of money in my mind. Exactly. Mob the illegal mentality. movement of money. I should like before, before this, like if you were put in jail for racketeering, like you had your hands in some illegal type of money. Yes. So the actual definition of civil racketeering is any act or threat involving murder, kidnapping, gambling, arson, robbery, bribery, extortion, dealing in obscene matter, or dealing in a controlled substance or listed chemicals. There's a whole list. So when you are talking about racketeering, this is not something that... I think it checked off every single... I think the tobacco companies have checked off legit every single one of those items that you have mentioned. Right. So that's where it, this is crazy to think that these companies were charged. They were found guilty yeah. of this. Well, I'm not su I'm surprised that they were charged. Um, I'm not surprised that they were doing it. Like you said, it's all about the money. So Absolutely. Of the, um, they did have a pretty large payout. Um, the tobacco companies have paid more than $100 billion to state governments uh, over a 25-year plan. It's pretty much a $246 billion settlement where the money is going into these actually smoking cessation activities, classes, education. Advertisements. Now you turn on the TV and you don't see those commercials anymore of the cowboy smoking his, you know, cigarettes. Now you're seeing our, my, the commercial that still sticks in my mind to this day is the girl who's licking everything, including the trash can. That's disgusting. I know. But those are the advertisements <laughs> that, you know, they're putting out to combat, which to me is kind of like an oxymoron. And then the further we kind of get into this, you'll kind of see some con more conflicts of interest. But just think, I mean, you have a $246 billion settlement and those companies, and they ain't not a one of them gone bankrupt. No, that's just a, that's like one drop in a, in a bucket. I'm just saying. In 2018, more than seven out of every 100 people who tried to quit succeeded. That's not a lot. That's mm -hmm. only seven and a half percent. Um, you know, there are some ways to help. You know, there's nicotine patches, there's nicotine gum, there are even medications that your doctor can prescribe, um, like Wellbutrin or Chantex to kind of help you on that road to quitting. But then I was watching my documentaries like I usually do because I can't help myself. Like I feel like I need to be a sponge. So I watch all sorts of crazy documentaries, read articles and all of this. And this one particular documentary is from the UK, across the pond, as they say, mm -hmm. where the goal wasn't necessarily to get them to quit smoking. It was to get them to quit smoking cigarettes. Right. So the alternative option to smoking cigarettes is vaping. Mm -hmm. So vaping basically is an e-cigarette that has the potential to benefit adult smokers who are not pregnant if they use it as a substitute to regular cigarettes and other tobacco products. Because we're not just talking about cigarettes, we're talking about chew, we're talking about um, cigars, and we are talking about cigarettes. All those things have tobacco products in it. Right. And so if you, if you sat there and you listened to the whole list of ingredients that we called out, you know, it is, vaping is healthier than smoking. And so the big push in the UK was, let's get these people off of cigarettes and then get them to vaping and then see if they can quit from there. 
It's interesting because I know that we here in the United States have had a lot of, um, I say children, but it's really young adults, um, teenagers that are being hospitalized because of vaping and toxicities because mm -hmm. they think that, oh, it's not a cigarette. This is better. Well, and, and I think it's also because they're putting other things in there. Yeah. You know, they're, they're taking that e-cigarette or whatever you want to call it or mm -hmm. that device. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I can use nicotine in here. What else can I put in this thing? That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> I will say some of these kids are quite creative. I wouldn't have thought of it myself. Yes, I agree. So for vaping, adult statistics, but roughly one in every 20 Americans use vaping, use a vaping device of some sort, and one in three are vaping daily. 8% of Americans report using vaping products in the past week. Oklahoma has the highest rate of e-cigarette usage, followed by Louisiana, Nevada, Ohio, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Washington, D.C. has the lowest rates of e-cigarette usage, followed by South Dakota, California, Maryland, and Vermont. So a pretty good chunk. For That's the, interesting. Yeah. For the youth, uh, they more than 2 million youth, and this is middle and high school, in the U.S. are currently using e-cigarettes. That's crazy. 2 million kids in middle school and high school. Yeah. Middle You're, school, by the way, includes 10, 11, and 12 year olds. That, yeah. And 13. Yeah. That would kill my kids. That range. Nearly 85% are using flavored cartridges because they have all different kinds chocolate, blueberry, all different yes. kinds of fruity mm -hmm. things. Disposable e cigarettes are the most commonly used, and one in four use e cigarettes daily. I've had my child tell me that there are people on her bus that are using, that are vaping. Like while they're on the bus going home? While they're on the bus going home. And the bus driver does nothing. I don't know if it's one of those, they don't know. I don't. I don't. don't. Oh, wow. I don't. Well, sure you, you know what? It, I don't know. It's, this is what I find funny. We listed about, what, 15 ingredients for a, one cigarette. Right. So in e-cigarettes, there are only three ingredients. Mm -hmm. Right. So of course, nicotine. Right. Um, you can also use in e-cigarettes THC or CBDs. Right. Um, and then of course, other substances like flavoring and additives, because if you have something that's chocolate flavored, I'm sure you're going to have to have some preservative or additive in there to keep that flavor, right? Right. But so, that's going to be, those additives are going to be individual to yes, whatever, whatever flavor you're putting yeah. it in. So when it kind of goes back to when I said that whole documentary about the UK mm -hmm. and how they were trying to get people to stop smoking because, you know, when you look at that ingredients list, smoking is so much worse for you mm -hmm. than vaping is. And this is the reason why that dramatic change in ingredients. The chemicals are different. Absolutely. I mean, it's still a chemical, but it's it is less chemicals. Thank you. So the amount of nicotine in one standard Juul cartridge is roughly equal to the amount of nicotine in a pack of cigarettes or about 200 puffs. And that's according to the Juul website. And early nicotine use can harm brain development, alter nerve cell functions, and can increase the risk um, for younger kids to actually lead to smoking just regular cigarettes. And I think that this is pretty much an issue where these kids are, are smoking these e-cigarettes at a rate that is much higher than what they would if they were smoking cigarettes. And so the consumption of nicotine is much higher. Absolutely. But look, one standard cartridge mm -hmm. equals one pack of cigarettes. I wonder, so, go ahead. I wonder how many cartridges they're going through. Right. So that's because if be, you're doing two cartridges a day, that's, that's two packs and 400 puffs. Mm -hmm. 
So this is how an e-cigarette kind of works. It's battery powered device that converts liquid nicotine into a mist or a vapor. And then the person inhales it. Mm -hmm. There's no fire, no ash, no smoky smell. E-cigarettes don't contain all those harmful chemicals, you know, that we listed above, um, like the carbon monoxide and the tar that, you know, most people do know is in a cigarette. Right. So e-cigarettes are aerosols generally containing fewer toxic chemicals than that deadly mix that we mentioned above. And the aerosol is harmless. It can contain harmful and potentially harmful substances such as nicotine, heavy metals like lead, um, volatile organic compounds, and cancer-causing agents. And really, the e-cigarettes are targeting people that are already current smokers. That was, I think you had mentioned this earlier, that is what the idea was. But then this teen epidemic happened to where these younger kids are really being kind of targeted, they're being marketed to with Mm -hmm. the flavored cartridges, you know, the cute little devices and the brightly colored colors and things like that. So again, we're kind of going back into that same situation, maybe not to the extreme, but as to where the cigarette manufacturers like Philip Morris, for example, had done in the past where they were marketing cigarettes. Now, these people that are um, selling e-cigarettes and vapes are also doing the same marketing, but it's really geared towards younger kids. And in 2019, Jules and Philip Morris actually merged together and Altria paid $2.8 billion to acquire Juul, um, the company. And betting pretty much that those e-cigarettes and vapes were going to grow. And that was back in 2019. And it they weren't wrong. They if weren't you, wrong. If you are if you are Philip Morris, this was probably the best thing since the invention of the cigarette in regards it was a good to business. tobacco. Yep. Yes. Um, because now not only have you conquered it in in cigarette sticks, you know, for Mm -hmm. lack of better wording, but now you've got it in an e-vape form. So now you're getting it both ways. Right. So no matter if you're a smoker trying to quit smoking using e-cigarettes or vapes, or you're a kid and you're starting to vape and thinking it's better than smoking, they're they're still still reaping those benefits. Exactly. It It always boils down to that dollar and cent. Mm-hmm. So now this is just, this is crazy to me how this merger was even allowed, but anywho, the whole nother story. <laughs> like I was talking about earlier with these teens, and I know here in Virginia and the United States, there has been a lot of issues with hospitalizations because of e-cigarettes or vapes, and there was a disease Evolii, and this is from where the vitamin E acetate, which is an additive in some THC containing e cigarettes or vapes, that caused this outbreak, or it was strongly linked to the outbreak. Mm -hmm. And that's what was causing so many serious problems, serious illnesses in children. Adults using the nicotine containing e-cigarettes or vaping products as an alternative should not go back to smoking. They should look at all the information and try to use those e-cigarettes in addition to other smoking cessation material to help completely quit smoking anything altogether. You know, if there's a specific concern like, hey, I don't want to get this respiratory illness that I've been seeing some of the the younger kids get because that's where it's more prevalent for us that I've been seeing mm-hmm. is with with children. It's been more so the teens and the middle schoolers. Yeah, yeah. And so I know some adults were like, "Well, I'm not using this. You know, I'm going to go back to smoking." You know, it is something that you can talk with your doctor about because I know even when I worked in pulmonary, we had a lady that smoked cigarettes, went to e cigarettes, and then quit off of e cigarettes. She used it as a tool to quit smoking, which is 
what it was intended to do. Correct. She wanted a cigarette. Um, so instead of getting cigarettes, she bought an e-cigarette and was um, using that. Um, and then now she was weaning herself back off again when she came into the office. Well, one of her children had decided that they were going to throw away her e-cigarettes, which were expensive. I don't know how much they cost, but she said they were expensive. She went out and bought a pack of cigarettes and had actually started smoking cigarettes again. And mm -hmm. the pulmonologist was kind of mad. He's like, the next time they decide what you need to smoke and not smoke, they need to call me because I want to know where they got their degree from. I'd rather mm -hmm. you went back to the e-cigarettes and quit off of that since you've done that before, rather than go all the way back to point zero where you're back to smoking a pack of cigarette a day now. It's an alternative. Right. It's healthier than a cigarette. So the whole teen epidemic happened and, you know, the risk of nicotine in teenagers is still a fight that is just it's unavoidable. You know, it poses serious health risks. Exposure to nicotine during youth can lead to addiction and cause long-term harm to brain development. The vapor can also contain toxins. Um, toxins create cancer um, and tiny particles that are harmful when you breathe it in. More than 44,000 students took part in a 2018 survey of drug, alcohol, and cigarette use in the 8th, 10th, and 12th grade. Now, middle and high school, right? 8th mm -hmm. grade is middle, 10th and 12th is high school. 30%, 37% of 12th graders reported vaping in 2018 compared with 28% in 2017. That's almost a 10% rise, almost. So <laughs> in one year, in one year, it's crazy to me. Vaping of each substance that was asked about increased. So nicotine, flavored liquids, then you have marijuana and hash oil. You know, when you added these into the picture, it increased their usage of it. Mm -hmm. So what does the government do? The government comes in and says, this isn't working. You know, our goal is to have children not smoke, period, anything. Right. That's the goal. So what they've started doing is in 2017, they started banning flavor vapes. And so the goal was if they restricted the flavors that the teens liked, that would, uh, that would get them to quit. Right. And and since then, they've added and changed the age limit to um, smoking of anything like cigarettes or vaping. They changed that from 18 to 21 um, in hopes that that would even curtail, you know, teen smoking even more. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows the best way to quit is to never start. Like if you never pick up that cigarette. If you never start smoking, then you don't have to worry about putting it down. Right. But if you are going to be a smoker and you are compromised and have emphysema and COPD, maybe it's time for you to think, okay, we need to let the cigarettes go and maybe try vaping along with quitting. Because the, right. if you think about it, the lesser of the two evils are the e-cigarettes. And then that way you can preserve what little lung function you may have left. Left. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you are a smoker, you can join the 1 million smokers and give up smoking, at least for this one day. And it could be exactly what you need to lead you on your journey to never picking up another cigarette again. You can always find our references at www.thenursingpostpodcast.com. You can find us on your favorite platform. Please leave your comments and questions there. And thanks again for listening to The Nursing Post.